Hello, welcome to this video abstract of the Brain original article titled Diabetes and Hypertension are related to amyloid beta burden in a population-based Rotterdam study. My name is Joy van Aarlong and I'm a shared first author on this work. Vascular risk factors are potentially modifiable and they've also been associated with an increased risk of dementia. However, the pathways through which vascular risk factors lead to this increased risk of dementia are quite uncertain. It is established that they lead to cerebral vascular pathology and that eventually leads to dementia. However, it could also be possible that vascular risk factors lead to amyloid beta pathology. But work in this topic has been quite inconsistent. While a better understanding of the relationship between vascular risk factors and amyloid beta pathology is important for the development of preventive strategies. Therefore, we have investigated which vascular risk factors exacerbate amyloid beta pathology in a population free of dementia. We studied this within the Rotterdam study, that is a population-based cohort study based in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. We have invited participants to undergo an amyloid PET-CT scan from September 2018 until November 2021. Participants were free of dementia and 60 years or older at the start of the scan. We have 635 amyloid PET-CT scans that we've used in this study. The mean age of our participants was 69 years old, 16.4% was amyloid beta positive, and 51.2% was female. 29.9% carried at least one APOE4 allele, which is the strongest known genetic risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. So we've assessed six different vascular risk factors, seven years before PET and 13 years before PET. And when we look at the presence of amyloid beta pathology in the brain, we see that participants with diabetes seven years before the PET are more likely amyloid beta positive. We've also assessed the severity of amyloid beta pathology by looking at the amount of tracer uptake expressed here as a standard uptake value ratio, the SUVR. So when you look at the second figure, you also see that participants with diabetes have more severe amyloid beta pathology in their brain. Next, we also looked at the APOE4 dependent effects, because previous literature has suggested a modifying role for APOE4. In this figure, you see on the y-axis the severity of amyloid beta pathology, and on the x-axis you see on the left the non-carriers, on the right the carriers, and the orange uh, dots are those that have the risk factor present. So here you can see that for hypertension, only in APOE4 carriers, having this risk factor is associated with more severe amyloid beta pathology. And in contrast, when we look at hypercholesterolemia, this is associated with less severe amyloid beta pathology only in carriers. And for the other vascular risk factors, we did not see this modifying rule of APOE4. So in conclusion, or in summary, we see that participants with diabetes have more and more severe amyloid beta pathology and this is independent of a genetic risk. Whereas in hypertension, we only see more severe amyloid beta pathology in those carrying an APOE4 allele. And in contrast, we see for hypercholesterolemia, less severe amyloid beta pathology only in those carrying an APOE4 allele. So these results suggest that diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, and hypertension all play a role in the neuropathological processes of Alzheimer's disease. But before this can be translated into preventive strategies, we need more longitudinal studies in asymptomatic participants with a vascular risk profile exposure that is representative of the population. So with that, I would like to thank you for listening to this video and thank my colleagues, funders, and last but not least, the participants that made this research possible. Thank you.